Hello friends, you might be wondering what I was doing in that hole. Well, that is one of my usual trips to find something new. And guess what I found today? Ta-da! This is the bag of five senses. Come, let's see what's inside. Zoom in! Whoa! These are the five senses. Sense of sight, sense of hearing, sense of smell, sense of taste, and sense of touch. These are the eyes. They help you see. Yes, you're using them right now while looking at me. Amazing, isn't it? Your eyes help you to see things. Just like how it will help us to see what's next. These are the ears. They help you hear. Do you hear that? Wonderful music, isn't it? Your ears help you hear. So whenever you hear beautiful things like birds chirping or a car blowing its horn, you know it's your sense of hearing. Ugh, I smell something. Is it coming from the garbage bin outside? This is your nose. It helps you smell different things. It could be something stinky like the garbage or something delicious. Ah, like a mug of hot chocolate. This is your tongue. It helps you taste different kinds of food. Hey, that's a pizza! Mmm, yummy! Whether it's spicy or sour sweet or bitter you know it all because of the sense of taste. And this is your skin. It helps you touch and feel things. When you touch clay and touch wood, do they feel different to you? Does the clay seem soft and smooth and the wood seems hard and rough? Your skin helps you know whether something is hot or cold, liquid or solid, soft or hard. Remember King Midas, who was cursed that his touch would turn anything into gold. <laughs> but don't worry, that's not gonna happen to you. Trivia time! Did you know that the snakes hear from their jawbones? And 80% of what humans experience as taste is actually smell. Now I need to go back to that hole to find out something more for you. So this is me zooming out. Tune in next time for some more fun facts. Oh, there you are. I was looking for you everywhere. Wonder what I'd do without my eyes. Hey, so why don't we talk about your eyes today? Yes, eyes help you see things, see colors and see this video too. So, let's talk about how your eyes work. Zoom in! Well, the human eye works no less than a digital camera. The fact that you're seeing so many things has a process. And I'll tell you what actually happens inside your eyes. This is the cornea. The cornea is the clear front surface of the eye. You know, it actually acts like a camera lens. You could say that this is the window that allows the light to get in. Next comes the iris, which is a thin circular structure in the eye. This works like a camera shutter, deciding what should be the amount of light that enters the eye. It passes the light rays 
to the back of the eye called the pupil, which appears as a black hole at the center of the iris. It is the opening through which light enters the eye. Depending on the amount of light, the iris stretches and contracts the pupil. Just how the aperture of a camera works. Then comes the lens of the eye, which is just behind the pupil. Okay, do this experiment. Close one eye and bring a pencil close to the eye, which is open. Make sure you can see it clearly. Now, bring the pencil close to your eye. Bring it closer, closer. That's right. Now, does it become blurry? Well, this is the job of the lens of your eye. It focuses and defocuses depending on how far the object is from your eye. Now, the light reaches the retina. This acts as an image sensor of a digital camera. Well, in simpler words, it converts the light that you take in into electronic signals. Then, the optic nerve of the eye transmits those electronic signals to the brain, which lets you finally see an object. Well, the retina actually perceives the world as upside down and it is the brain that flips the image back for you. Amazing, isn't it? Trivia time! On an average, a person blinks 17 times in a minute. An eye is composed of more than 2 million working parts. Hmm, how I wish our eyes could click photographs and store them inside our heads forever. But I guess they do, in the form of memories. So friends, see the world around you and make lots of memories. Tune in next time for some more fun facts. This is me zooming out. Huh? Oh, did you hear that, friends? I think someone needs help. Let's follow the sound and find out. Oh no, little kitty. Say thanks to my sharp ears that were able to detect your squeaky voice despite loud music playing in the background. Speaking of ears, have you ever wondered how you could hear what I say and all the noise around you? Don't worry if you have not because I'm here to explain. So, zoom in! The ability to accurately identify sound is possible due to the auditory system that is comprised of your ears and the brain. The ear's job is to convert the sound energy into a neutral signal, which later is received by your brain through three parts of the ear. The outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. But the big question is, how does it work? Well, it all starts with the sound waves falling on the outer part of your ear, known as the pinna, that acts as a funnel and sends the sound into the ear canal, another part of your outer ear, and heads towards the middle part of your ear, hitting the eardrum, a very delicate piece of tightly stretched skin, making it vibrate like the head of an actual drum. This vibrating eardrum shakes a tiny chain of three bones called the ossicle that starts with the hammer and passes through the anvil and moves the third bone known as tapes or stirrup. But it's not over yet. Once the sound passes the middle ear through the ossicle, it travels into the cochlea, a small circular tube filled with liquid situated in the inner ear. The vibration caused by the ossicles 
create waves in the cochlear fluid, converting the sound vibration into liquid vibration. The cochlear consists of many hair. And when the fluid in the cochlear moves, it moves these tiny hair, creating nerve signals that get sent through the auditory nerve into the brain. The brain processes these signals as sound and so you hear. It's trivia time! Did you know that cochlea means snail in Latin? The cochlea gets its name from its unique coiled up shape that looks like a snail shell. I bet that was the first thing that came to your mind when you saw it. Also, not all living creatures hear with ears. Snakes use jaw bones. Fish respond to pressure changes. And male mosquitoes use antenna. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. And until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Come, little kitty. Let's go for a walk. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Kitty. Ah, never mind. Oh no! The food! Phew! I almost burnt my food. But thanks to my invisible nose, that I was able to smell it before it was too late. Speaking of nose, do you know how it works? If not, don't worry my friends. Let's be nosy and find out some interesting facts about an impressive part of our body we call the nose. Zoom in! Well friends, as we all know that your nose lets you smell, breathe and is the main gate for the respiratory system. And it all starts with the nostrils which is the entrance point of your nose, separated by a wiggly wall in the middle called the septum, made of a very thin piece of skin and bone known as the cartilage. Right behind your nose is a space called the nasal cavity that connects with the back of the throat. As you inhale the air through your nostrils, it enters the nasal passages and travels into your nasal cavity. Then the air moves downwards through the trachea, generally known as the windpipe, all the way to the lungs. Then the whole process occurs in reverse order as you exhale the air out. But your nose is not limited to acting as a passageway for air. It also warms, moistens and filters the air before it goes to the lungs with the help of a moist, thin layer of tissue called a mucous membrane, which makes mucus, that sticky stuff in your nose, commonly known as snot. The snot works with your hair to trap unwanted small particles like dust and germs that could be harmful to your lungs. When this captured dirt dries up along with mucus, you get boogers. So, we need to appreciate these boogers as they are formed in the process of protecting your lungs. But sometimes your nose traps something you wanted to get rid of. And you know what happens next? You sneeze! I know you must be wondering, but where is the smelling part? Well, the reason you can smell different things around you is because of the olfactory epithelium. The olfactory epithelium contains special receptors that notice the smell and sends the signals along the olfactory nerve to the olfactory bulb. And finally, those signals go to the other parts of the brain to be interpreted as a smell you may recognize, like food, fruits, flowers, or smelly socks. Truly amazing, isn't it? Trivia time! Did you know 
Anosmia is the inability to perceive odor or a lack of functioning olfaction, the loss of the sense of smell. Anosmia may be temporary, but some forms, such as from an accident, can be permanent. Anosmia can happen due to many factors, including inflammation of the nasal mucosa, blockage of nasal passages, or destruction of one temporal lobe. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Ah, oh, never mind. Oh, sure, little kitty. It is indeed very yummy. Hey, friends, would you like to have some ice cream with us? Mmm, whoa, that tasted really good. Speaking of taste, do you know how your tongue allows you to experience different flavors of the things you eat, lick, and bite? Well, today let us find the answer to this mouth-watering question and explore the tasty world of the tongue. So, zoom in! As we all know, your tongue is a muscular organ that helps you perceive the taste and texture of food, assists you to create speech while talking, and is vital for jump-starting the digestive process when you eat. First, let us talk about the talking. As I am already talking, <laughs> tongue's amazing flexibility and movability enable you to speak. Without it, it will be tough to pronounce words. For instance, just try to say, I love Dr. Binox without using your tongue. Go ahead, try it. There you go. I'm sure you must be having a difficult time saying it. That's because the tongue is essential for articulating the consonants T, D, L, or the rolling R. When pronouncing the letter K and G, the tongue is slightly narrowed at the back. And when we say S, the tip of the tongue moves backward. Also, the tongue being extremely movable helps us eat. It enables us to turn solid food into a mash with the support of your teeth. And while the teeth grind the food, it gets mixed with saliva, also known as spit. This mixture of food and saliva then get pushed by your tongue to the back of the throat, where it goes down through your esophagus and into your stomach. Next comes an essential feature of your tongue, that is tasting. Most people mistake the rough, bumpy structure on the surface of the tongue as taste buds. But these are papillae. And it's actually papillae that contains the taste buds that help you taste everything. And you can detect the variety of flavors like sweet, bitter, sour, and salty. But it won't be possible to enjoy these flavors without the amazing smelling powers of the nose as taste and smell are interdependent. So, do not forget to learn about the incredible nose in one of our previous videos. We are sharing the link below. Trivia time! Did you know there are between 3,000 and 10,000 taste buds on the human tongue? The taste receptors on our tongue can't really taste our food until the saliva in our mouth has moistened it. Also, some animals like frogs, chameleons, and anteaters have tongues that are designed to help them catch their prey. Their tongue is usually extra large and extends out of their mouth to grab insects. But the largest tongue among all animals is that of the blue whale. Their tongue weighs an average of 2.7 metric tons. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. And until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Ah, oh, never mind. Mm -hmm.
Breakfast check. Clothes check. Sunscreen. Oh, oh, oh my God. I forgot to bring the sunscreen. I need to go back and bring it or else my smooth, shiny teal skin will get burnt due to UV rays. Oh, hello friends. As you can see, I'm going to bring a bottle of sunscreen. And till the time I reach home, let me take you under the surface of the skin. So, zoom in. Or should I say, zoom under. Well friends, we all have skin and it serves multiple purposes. Like, it is an essential barrier or a first line of protection against the outside environment. It is a crucial part of one of our five senses. It absorbs sunlight for vitamin D and heat and controls our internal temperature and permits the sensations of touch, heat and cold. But how does it work? Well, your skin is made up of three layers. The epidermis, dermis and hypodermis. Let's start with the first layer known as epidermis. The epidermis is the outer layer of skin and is made up mainly of skin cells. The cells on the very outer layer of the epidermis are constantly dying and getting replaced by new cells every four weeks. As the new cells are formed, the older ones are pushed up. Once they reach the surface area, they provide a waterproof barrier from the invading microbes and other external forces. The epidermis also contains melanin that sets the tone of your skin. More the melanin, the darker the skin. Melanin also helps to protect from harmful sun rays. But it has its limits and that's why we need some sunscreen. Now, let's go to the second layer known as the dermis. The dermis contains tough connective tissue, hair follicles, sweat glands and nerve endings through which the skin sends the messages to the brain about all the things you touch. Then the brain and the nervous system decides how to respond towards it. For example, if you touch something too hot, your nervous system will tell your brain to move away from it. The dermis also contains the sweat glands, where the sweat is generated and poured out all the way through the epidermis, where the sweat comes out of the holes called pores, that helps to regulate your body's temperature. And the last part of your skin layer is called the hypodermis, also known as subcutaneous tissue and is made up of fat and connective tissue. The hypodermis's primary function is to store fat. The body needs some level of fat to cushion and protect your bones and organs. Also, it helps us to keep our body nice and warm. Trivia time! Did you know that your skin is the largest organ in your body? It occupies nearly 1.73 square meters or more than 18.5 square feet to cover our flesh and bones and makes up about 16% of our body weight. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Oh, goodness me. Hmm, never mind. Oh, you must be thinking I'm out of my senses, right? Well, that's because I have a lot of sensations to deal with. Hey, didn't you always know that there are only five senses? No, there are more. A sense of sight, smell, touch, hearing and taste are the common ones. The uncommon ones are sense of... Uh-uh. Wait, we got to zoom in for that. Zoom in! Pressure Ever played red hands? 
and felt the pressure when you tried to remove your hand from the bottom? There you go. Pressure is a different sense. Quite different from the sense of touch. Thermoception. Hmm. Yum. Wow. Hey, be careful. That's hot. Hmm. Well, thermoception is the ability to sense hot and cold. There are various thermoceptors in the brain, which are used for monitoring internal body temperature as well. Tension sensors. Ugh. Ugh. Now, that's heavy. Tension sensors are found in your muscles, which allow the brain to monitor muscle tension. Hunger. That's our favorite sense. <laughs> this allows you to know when your body feels hungry and needs something to eat. Mm. Oh. Oh. Mm. Whoa! Nociception. Oh, that must hurt, right? Yeah. Nociception is the ability to feel pain. If you think this is the extremity of the sense of touch, then no, you're slightly mistaken. This sense is way more than just touching because it has a separate sensory system. Equally bryoception. This sense allows you to keep your balance and sense your body movements. Probably one of the reasons why you don't keep falling. Magnetoception. It is the ability to detect magnetic fields, which help us in the sense of direction. Thirst. This sense checks the hydration levels of your body. It tells you whether your body needs water. <laughs> ah, I was super thirsty. Trivia time! The back of a human body is the least sensitive part. The traditional five senses model was credited to Aristotle. So, this is me zooming out. Tune in next time for more fun facts.